Okay, we're back live in Los Angeles, California, here at the Hyatt in Irvine, right next to the John Wayne Airport, 12 miles from Newport Beach. This is the Cube. This is where we go out to the events and talk to the smartest people we can find, extract the signal from the noise, and bring it to you and share that with you. This is our first Cube event where we are on behalf of ServicesAngle.com, where we cover the business of services, cloud, mobile, and social, and the disruption that's happening. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. John, I wish I had time to spend down here at the beach, but uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so we're here with Jerry Nolan, who is the worldwide director of Hyperscale uh, Support. Uh, for HP. Hyperscale is a hot topic. It's something that we've been covering. Uh, we were at the Project Moonshot announcement, which was you know, very interesting. Uh, so, Jerry, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to have you here. Uh, we just had Seamus on. You know Seamus very well. Absolutely, uh, no Seamus. <laughs> Keep the Irish theme going here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, um, well, let's start talk with talking about hyperscale. I mean, it's an interesting topic, but for our audience out there that may not know what it is, you know, it sounds like an interesting buzzword. W what is hyperscale and why is it important? Excellent question, and uh, it's one I've been asked uh, many times by my friends. Hyperscale, it's a great term. Uh, at HP, it categorizes three types of customers. Um, firstly, uh, service providers, you know, think uh, eBay, Apple, uh, you know, Microsoft being those types of customers. Um, second category would be uh, high performance computing, think high compute. Uh, companies that need a lot of uh, compute node, like R and D, Lawrence government, Livermore, for example. Exactly, right. exactly. Um, Western Geco, those types of companies, right. and then web hosters, companies think GoDaddy, think Rackspace, that type of organization, and they typically need. They're very large environments. They typically have large amounts of uh, very talented IT staff on board. And tons and of servers. Tons of servers. They are very large environments, <laughs> hence the term hyperscale. They're expanding and growing at a rapid pace, and uh, they have some very unique unique needs. So one of the things that we've been, uh, I've been seeing in hyperscale is the, is the energy is huge, right? You know, the trend of, with big data, we're seeing massive amounts of innovation around big, big analytics in medicine, chemistry, oil and gas to medical. So you have a, a, an innovation uh, happening where all this new big data is putting more yep. compute power to work. Yep, hence absolutely. more services, hence more energy. So what's the, what are you seeing in terms of the data center challenges around energy and compute kind of, because people want compute to yep. do those type of applications around big data and, and some of those emerging apps, but then you get the power issues. Obviously you get the pod, but what are the, what's the core challenge there? Yeah, well, in hyperscale, it's actually interesting. There's, there's, it depends, obviously, it varies by customer, but one of the key challenges we see is, is all about speed. It's, uh, it's about how fast can I get new capability and new application um, uh, capability online, and, and how fast can we onboard the services to support that. So I'd say that's a common trend across many of the companies that we, uh, we deal with. And, uh, and I think you heard from Seamus some of the unique ways we're doing that with, uh, with data center care building out um, sort of building blocks and capabilities that really help uh, create a personalized experience for those types of uh, for those types of customers. So the DOE uh, came out with a, a, a paper around what they called exascale, which is sort yeah. of hyperscale, right? They're yeah. talk, talking about a, a billion cores, um, and in there they reference some of the challenges: software support, you know, um, yeah. reliability. John mentioned power and cooling. Um, so, and, and Seamus was talking about how. A lot of your hyperscale customers, they basically want a pallet, and they want you to Im embed your services into their supply chain. Yeah. Um, so talk about how hyperscale is changing support, and then we can talk about some of the specific offerings that you have. Yeah, yeah well, hyperscale, it, changed, it changes the world in terms of the types of services that we need to develop. So a great example would be, imagine a customer uh, who has 100,000 servers or systems. Um, from our spare parts point of view, that requires a very unique approach in terms of how you manage the, uh, uh, the change out of disks, CPUs, you know, fail items that, that, uh, that fail. So we built a unique service um, for that space that allows customers to hold on-site inventory of parts. Um, they, uh, they, you know, typically if a blade server goes out, it's not really a big deal. Um, they can, uh, you know, you can go through every Friday and replace the ones that are broken. So this new service, self-service spares, is, uh, is really uh, proving to be a big hit with these customers. And just an example of a unique requirement in that space where they have such a large scale of, uh, of systems that uh, it requires a very customized uh, comes to customize experience. Call handling would be another one. You know, when they call in, these customers buy, uh, a lot of these customers buy the performance optimized data centers, the pods, and uh, in that sense, they're buying complete data centers. So a call, we had one last week, um, 
customer said my pod is leaking so not your typical IT yeah. uh, support issue so uh, we need special um, advanced solution center technologists on the end of the phone to know how to deal with those types of issues so these customers they bring a whole new level of of, uh, of challenge to uh, to their vendors in terms of scale in terms of the types of issues in terms of the uh, uh, the requirement to have an end-to-end -end experience they don't want to be bounced around from pillar to post they want somebody to pick up the phone own their problem regardless of what it is and get it fixed really quickly you hear a lot about um, the intersection of application development and uh, operations I and mean, it's something that we've we've been covering at silicon angle and wikibon you know devops uh, where you're sort of cross-training people. And, uh, and I would think that a lot of the hyperscale customers are moving in that direction um, to be more efficient so that they can scale. Are you seeing that trend within your hyperscale base? Um, and l let, me, let me ask that and then I have a follow-up. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these customers um, deploying technologies like Hadoop, um, they bring very unique challenges. So they're absolutely uh, on that path. Yeah, and so then is there a specific support dimension to that how does that change if if I've now got you know the application development people and, and infrastructure management people cross trained in these disciplines how does that change or does it change the support that you're bringing it, it, it does I mean it changes on a number of levels it changes from a from an experience point of view if the customer has a problem in their environment these environments are very complex so while they're very dense and and, uh, and, and phenomenal environments the types of problems sometimes it can be uh, problematic to even isolate the issue, let alone then resolve it. Because it could be an HP problem, it could be a, a hardware, a software, an operating system, a hypervisor, an application. So picking up the phone and having a single point of contact who can own your problem end to end and try and help you quickly isolate the problem and then bring in the uh, associated experts and stick with you the whole time to get that done is a really big need for these guys and they really value that. I have a kind of a question coming from one of my friends who I follow on Twitter and, and respect. 